Isabella Peterson ties the score with her 78th goal of the year. That is the most in NCAA Division I women's lacrosse. It's one better than Izzy Skane for Northwestern, who's going to play in the Big Ten title game later tonight against 10th-ranked Maryland in Columbus, Ohio. She's dynamic, and that is maybe an overused word, um, but so good on so many different parts of the offensive game. And, of course, I would say, you know, her shooting and shot selection, her shooting percentage, um, but her skill is incredible, and most importantly, her IQ, how she sees the play as it's developing, even if she's the one handling the ball. By the way, that Big Ten title game, there is a little bit of history for both Florida and James Madison against Maryland and Northwestern. Northwestern is the last team to defeat Florida in a conference tournament title game that was way back in 2013 in the Old American Lacrosse Conference. And James Madison won its first ranked game of the year this year against Maryland, a Final Four team a year ago. Real good game. They were fifth ranked at that time. The Terps, 8-7 Dukes won that game. Well, they only lost their first game, then they kept winning after that. <laughs> they have so. now won 17 in a row. And that, that first loss, if you're just joining us, to the defending national champs, the wire-to-wire -wire undefeated UNC Tar Heels. Timeouts. Yeah, pretty Florida. good loss. Timeout Florida, and a quick timeout out of a, a media timeout. What do you suppose this is about for Mandy O'Leary? Uh, you know, listen, I think that they got the draw control. They have a little bit of trouble getting it down. Um, not seeing so many passing options there. So probably just getting settled, resettled. Uh, losing it so early on is interesting. But maybe they just want to organize. Maybe had wrong personnel in the field, needed to switch it out. It could be anything at this point. Take a look at the last time Florida and James Madison faced off. James Madison winning 14 to nine. It was the first conference game for JMU in the American. And Krista, this was a tight game for most of it. You look at the final score, 14-9. It was a Florida lead until late in the third quarter. JMU scored six unanswered from six different goal scores. Incredible, and you can see they held Florida scoreless. Can you imagine this teams we're watching today that this Florida team would be held scoreless in the fourth? Uh, yeah, James Madison, they're both teams are serious players. Uh, and going after that win at the end, when it comes down to the fourth quarter like that, probably devastating for Florida, but those bumps and bruises help you to get into games like this and say, that will not, cannot happen again, and having strategy to back it up. You're watching the American Women's Lacrosse title game, the American Baseball Championship begins May 23rd from Baycare Ballpark in Clearwater, Florida, home to Philadelphia Phillies spring training facility. Follow all the action through the semifinals exclusively on ESPN+. There's Cap Buchanan, her first year as the starter between the pipes for the Dukes. What a year she has had, third in the nation in goals against average. You go back to that Maryland game we mentioned, 10 saves in that game and a one goal win. She stuffed Hannah Lubecker with 90 seconds left to preserve that one goal victory. And if you do anything about Lubecker, she is an offensive force. Florida, an offensive force this year, 10th best offense in the nation, best in the AAC. Taylor Wareheim moves it up. Paisley Egan. Lapinto guarded by Mady. Gators looking for a cutter. 30 seconds on the clock. Fed across, too tall for Wareheim. Out of bounds. Florida doing a great job breaking that JMU zone defense by quick passing. It's one of the best ways to effectively break a zone because they're shifting and turning, but a little high on that pass there. We have seen at times clinical passing displays by Florida. None better than their woman down goal that was just tic-tac-toe to take the lead in the first quarter. Yeah, and it really shows off connection, camaraderie, uh, and, and that is really hard to beat. So having, having you know, a great skilled attack, having really powerful, potent 
resources that you can use, and score, pass, shoot, all of it. Um, you know, it's it's just fascinating to watch how how linked they are. Jankowski sends it to Caitlin Morgan, conference leader in assists, has two today. Isabella Peterson swung up top. Maggie Clark sitting on a couple goals this afternoon. James Madison, again, like sort of eliminating their passing speed here, looking for 1v1 opportunities, looking for like a little two-man game. Unlikely missed pass there. Piracino is getting pestered by a Florida double team. They'll draw the foul, but with the possession clock running out, and it's going to run out for sure on the Dukes. Best thing you can do is get it across that, that end line and have the ball picked up there. Time to adjust, particularly against a, a great clearing team in Florida. That is as close to a football punt as you'll see in this sport. <laughs> yeah. Madison Waters. Florida known for getting it safely down the field. Foul on Jankowski, she's sent off. Yellow card, too much of a push on Catherine Flaherty. I just think it's an, an un unnecessary um, amount of force at this place in the field. Um, you know, it's a midfield here. You've got a double team in here. Um, and just sort of coming in with that extra, it's really hard to keep your emotions in check at a game um, with so much on the line here. But again, knowing where you are in the field is important. Florida's first woman up today. Jankowski off for the yellow card. Florida scored woman down, we mentioned before, to take the lead in the first quarter. And now they get the advantage. Wareheim works it down low. Yeah, and again, I would anticipate a lot of passing here to get that shifting defense, um, offering an opening. Here's Waters. Heller for Wareheim. Looking for a cutter. Side of the net, dodge, fake. Contact foul, and a free position coming for the Gators. But it's Maggie Hall who is being helped up by Emma Lapinto and Taylor Wareheim. Yeah, there's a lot of contact at a really fast pace um, on both ends for sure. You'd anticipate you know, some sliding fouls, especially when you're woman down, right? You're covering more space with less people. You have a passing team that's so skilled by Florida who can move the ball so quickly. Now, will she shoot on this free position or set up a pass woman up? Hall in, back post! Lepinto stopped by Buchanan. Beautiful play by Florida. Unexpected, um, especially hitting Lepinto down low and Buchanan just coming up big again. What an incredible save. You can just see how quick the ball is moving, how much Pat has, Kat Buchanan has to move there and be able to stop that is absolutely incredible. Lepinto is no stranger to faking and putting it around the goalie, but Buchanan just absolutely stops her there. Fourth save of the game for Cap Buchanan. Meanwhile, Carolyn Thistlewaite was knocked down in transition. Dodges away from Heller and trying to kill this Florida woman up. With Ty Jankowski sent off with a yellow card. Clark. Will JMU get a look at goal woman down. The Florida shorthanded goal came on a broken play turnover in the midfield. So a transition play, not a settled possession. Here is Peterson. If anybody's gonna dodge and take a, a shot at the cage shorthanded, it's probably Peterson. Yeah. They will run this penalty out. Olivia Mattis with it. Even strength again, 15 seconds on the possession clock. And one minute to go in the third quarter of the title game. Lizzie Fox. Fox 
to a right hand. Fox gives James Madison the lead. And, you know, I was going to say that it's it's been a little bit more difficult for James Madison to sort of get an offensive flow going, especially using the momentum of passes leading into it. So I was interested in what they were going to do with these last 15 seconds. And giving the ball to Lizzie Fox here is a great opportunity first. You know, they isolate this 1v1. She finds a space inside and at, takes it to Cage, obviously putting it behind there. Shelly Clays would describe her as unselfish, almost even to a fault. So to get the green light and saying, this is you with the time winding down, especially for an unselfish player, to be able to turn that on and make it and convert that, that shot to a goal, really, really critical timing for Lizzie Fox here for James Madison. And Lizzie Fox has had a big game against Florida before. They're meeting in the regular season, her first hat trick in two years. And she gives the Dukes the lead late in the third quarter. Little shot of Colleen Shearer there. Again, the offense as she's running and, and calling the, the, the plays. Um, it's a good call for her there. Probably talk to, talk to the players in those situations. Again, these teams are so well practiced, right? Like they've practiced man up situations, man down situations. They practice all even, behind by a goal, with two minutes left, ahead by a goal, with three minutes left. Um, so situationally, that, that may be what they come out of when they have 15 seconds on a scoring play. Ground ball pick up by Nicole Marshall off the draw. Now Peterson hounded at midfield. What pressure provided by Shelton Sowers. 25 seconds, Durkin across the restraining line. She's great in transition for James Madison when they need it. She protects the ball really well, gets it down carefully, and then, of course, eases herself out of the offense. <laughs> Morgan at Jankowski. Now Peterson, quick release! Wow. I mean, great hard shot and a scoop up by Resnick. What a stop by Resnick, the three-time defending goalkeeper of the year on the reigning attack player of the year. And it keeps James Madison up just one as we go to the fourth in the title game. 